Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is part 10 of our Learn Lightroom 5 video series and in this episode we're going to talk about presets and how if you save your work to a preset you could save a lot of time in your um, develop workflow. Before we do that though, if you guys could do me a favor and if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the videos and comment in the videos, I'd really appreciate it and thank you to everyone who's done so already. Okay, let's get started. Um, I'm going to develop a photograph and then I'm going to show you how to make a preset and how you could use that preset to apply it to photograph other photographs you have and how it's going to save you a lot of time. So I'm going to close down this left hand panel for now to give us a little more room. Um, you guys, I'm going to go really quickly on the developing of the photograph here. Um, if anyone is, if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, tune in to the episode 1, episode 3, episode 9. I develop photos from start to finish and they explain the steps a lot better than I'm going to now. So I'm going to develop this uh, photograph of the city of Buffalo. I took this shot from the observation deck of City Hall. And as I normally do, is I turn highlights all the way down and I turn shadows all the way up. Um, for landscape photos, I do the same thing almost all the time. That's why it's advantageous, advantageous, you know what I mean, uh, to make a preset. So um, after I do the highlights and shadows, I adjust the white point by holding in the Alter Option key and adjusting the whites to the right, the slider to the right, until I get some whites coming through. The blacks, I hold the Alter Option key in and move that to the left till I get some black coming through. I typically move this one a little further than I did the white. Uh, I'm going to add some clarity. I'm going to add some vibrance. And then I'm going to add some contrast. Now in this case, I was shooting through glass. There was a glass, you know, that I had to shoot through on the observation deck. So it added a little haze to the photograph. If you ever have haze in a photograph, contrast will help remove some of that haze. So I'm going to turn contrast up. I'm done with the basic panel. I'm going to jump down to the HSL panel. As you guys noticed in my previous videos, I like to bring out the blue sky. So I go into the saturation tab and I'm going to increase the blue saturation. Also in landscapes and in this photo there's some green. You know, almost always in landscapes you're going to have grass, bushes, or trees. So you want to probably bring those out a little bit too. So I'm going to bring up the green a little bit in the yellow a little bit. That will help enhance the greens in the photograph. I go to luminance and I'm going to turn the blue down. This is going to make the sky darker. And it also makes Lake Erie darker, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to bring the yellows up a little bit. I want to make those lighter, so I'm increasing the luminance on those. Okay, that's the HSL panel. Uh, next in the detail panel, which I mentioned before I cover, or I don't know if I mentioned, I cover part five in sharpening and noise reduction, um, if you want to check that out. Um, I go into detail in that episode about what all these sliders do. Right now, I'm going to just do that quick and dirty sharpening I mention all the time. Just put sharpening somewhere in the 70s and noise reduction somewhere in the 40s, and that will really give you a decently balanced, sharpened noise reduction on your shot. Um, Next I'm going to do, well, it's next typically what I do is noise, or excuse me, lens corrections. And I'm going to do it on this photo. I'm going to enable the profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. I'm going to hit auto to auto, um, it, it, if buildings look like they're falling over, your horizon's crooked, if you hit auto it will take care of that. I'm going to have an episode where I cover this panel exclusively and show you the power of, of what you can do. Now when we do the preset, I'm not going to save these to the preset. And the reason being is I found that if you do, it doesn't seem to uh, get applied correctly to the other photos. And you might have had a perfectly straight photo, and when you apply your preset, and if the preset photo had a crooked um, horizon, it'll make the new photo's horizon crooked, if that made any sense whatsoever, which I know it didn't, but bear with me and you'll find out. Um, effects. I often add a vignette, so I'm going to add one here because I, I almost always do, so why not have it in my preset. And that's that. So this photo is now done. This um, is a pro the process photo the way I want it to do. Now I want to save a preset so I could do all these other photos with one click. So 
up here in the left hand panel when you're in the develop module there's a part here that says presets Lightroom comes with some presets already and if you might remember um, in part 5 I showed you the sharpening presets but we're not going to use those we're going to make our own right here to the right this little plus sign click that plus sign and you'll come up with this dialog box first thing it does it asks you to name your presets and I'm going to name this one landscape with blue sky now of course I wrote blue sky because many times I'll do a landscape maybe it has a gray sky and maybe it doesn't have the sky in it at all it just has buildings or something so I adjusted that blue slider so I wanna I want in the future to know that this is the preset when I have a blue sky in the photograph I want to use this preset now I mentioned about the lens corrections um, I don't want to have that clicked unclicking any of these boxes means it will not be saved in the preset um, so I'm going to unclick this box, which include, um, excludes everything th in that panel. And I'll do that. That will one thing I'll, I'll have to add to any of my shots later. So I click Create to create the preset. And there it is, Landscape with Blue Sky. Let's go on to another photo. This is a photograph of the Niagara Gorge. I'm just going to click on the preset. It will take a second to render. And there it is. It, it saved me all that work. Now one thing though is you might want to go into the basic panel and readjust the whites and the blacks because the whites and the blacks were adjusted specifically for that previous photo. So it only will take a second. I'll hold in the alter option key and move this you know to the right a little bit and this I'll probably have to back off. Yeah back that off a little bit. And now the whites and blacks are better adjusted for this photograph. You might want to also readjust maybe your vignette. It might be too strong. Um, if it was crooked, I might have to go into the, um, I could either go into this crop tool and adjust the angle here. Or I could go into the lens corrections and adjust the angle. Now I am going to enable my profile corrections enable the chromatic aberration and this photo is done that was a lot faster now here's a photograph of Niagara Falls um, this um, you know typical snapshot let's hit the preset landscape of blue sky and there now this is a case where it is a little overbaked so we'll adjust it we'll readjust it I should say hold the alter option key we're gonna do the whites and blacks first turn whites up a little bit. We're going to bring blacks down, I'm sure. Yeah. And then um, the main thing is a little too blue. So I'm going to go in the HSL panel and I'm going to go right into the luminance and I'm going to bring blue down a little bit. Now it's starting to look better. Um, I could, oops, excuse me. I could go into the saturation too and just bring blue down, down just a little more. And that's that. Um, now in this case it is slightly crooked so I could go up in here into the angle and when I click down it comes up with that a grid pattern to help me straighten it and then when I'm satisfied that it's straight hit enter I go down to lens corrections hit enable profile corrections remove chromatic aberration that photo is done so that one took a little longer because I had to readjust the blues I suspect I'll have to do the same on this one we'll click the preset and yeah, it's and it's a little dark too. So like I mentioned, the presets are more of a starting point. Um, so you know, use them to get you to where you, um, you know, closer to where you need to be. In many cases, and I got a feeling in some of these other shots, it'll be right on, and I won't have to really do anything. Um, but in the meantime, it's still saving me a lot of time um, doing these shots here. And I'd say that one's done. I could do lens corrections too, though. Enable profile corrections and chromatic aberration. Okay, next one. Here's a more typical landscape. Um, the other ones were more cityscapes. Uh, there, that one's pretty much perfect. Don't have to do anything. Here's one here. Hit landscape of blue sky. Almost perfect. I just have to straighten the horizon. I took this on a tripod too. No excuse for that one being crooked. Okay, that one I'd say is done. 
Here's another one. Landscape blue sky. Bam. I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, that's a good shot. So anyways, that's how you make a preset, how you could use it, and it will save you a lot of time. Um, again, I appreciate all you guys watching, and I appreciate everyone that has subscribed to my channel and liked the videos and commented on the videos. And if you guys didn't do that, if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. And until our next video, everyone take care and good shooting.